Hi, and welcome to the International Space Station Flight Controller Flight Control Room. We have here today uh, Anthony Varia, who is a Spartan flight controller, and he's going to give us an update on the uh, ammonia link that uh, we had the spacewalk over the weekend to repair. Thanks so much for joining us, Anthony. Good morning. Glad to be here. Okay, why don't we start with uh, real quick explaining what a Spartan is to just okay, give so that background. Spartan's in charge of the electrical and the thermal systems on board station. So uh, all the ammonia power, all the ammonia cooling systems on the external uh, on the external part of the station that takes away the heat from the modules and the in this case the EVA was done on the uh, the cooling system that cools the batteries. You know, just like a cellu cellular phone. Uh, batteries get hot when they are discharging and so we have to have an ammonia cooling system to radiate that heat away via radiator. So we've got a pump, runs it through the, the batteries, underneath the batteries, and then uh, re releases that heat into space via a radiator. So okay. that's uh, that's where we had the uh, the, the leak this past week. And we and have a graphic here of uh, what that area looks like. Exactly. So that's out on the P6 truss. We're talking the far port side of the of the space station. Now, P6 truss was actually, even though it's way out on the end, uh, that piece of truss has been on orbit since, gosh, 2000 or something, something in that time frame. Right. And uh, that was back when the station was much smaller. So as we built out the truss, we've been able to finally put it in its final spot, which you see here on the far port side of the vehicle. So, uh, you know, these cooling systems uh, that Spartan is in charge of, along with the electrical systems, are what uh, keep the lights on and keep everything running on station. Very and important. We, absolutely. And we want to make sure that they're running okay. So that's what normally the Spartan officer is in charge of, making sure that the uh, all the lights and pumps and fans and everything are working right so we can get, you know, good science down on station and keep the keep the crew members safe. And so last week we noticed that there was a, a, a leak in the ammonia system that cools that uh, area on the P6 truss, right? That's correct. So we sent... Uh, Chris Cassidy and Tom Marshburn out to do a spacewalk and take a look at it and get it repaired and, and, and changed out. Is that right? That's correct, and that was done in record time. You know, we've we've actually known that we've had a leak on the system for several years, a uh, very small leak starting back in 2006, about pound and a half per year. So out of a you know a system that's several dozen pounds, you know, 100 maybe on 100 pounds, that's not that big of a deal. So. The first thing we did was we decided, well, we'll just feed the leak. And so that was done on ULF-6 back in 2011. Uh, Mike Fink and, uh, and Drew Foistel went out to the P-6 work site and refilled that with ammonia from one of the other ammonia systems. So we thought we were doing pretty good then. And then the leak rate picked up last year, middle of last year, and that's when Sonny and Aki went out in EVA 20 in early November of 2012. And that was to try and isolate the radiator because the leak had gotten a lot worse. Mm -hmm. Well. We had a 50-50 chance on whether or not the leak was in the radiator or in the pump. Uh, those are the two parts that you can replace. And uh, as we learned after EVA 20, which Sonny Naki did in November, it wasn't in the radiator. So we kept an eye on it. We were watching the leak. And sure enough, on Thursday morning, the crew called down seeing ammonia flakes. Let me show what that looks like yeah, here. Yeah, good video of it here. Yeah, that's usually, that should be liquid pressurized ammonia, but when it's in the vacuum of space, it will uh, turn into uh, these small flakes here, which you can see. And so our leak rate, which in mid-2012 was a five pound per year leak rate, turned into maybe a five pound per day leak rate. And we Much couldn't operate. Significant. Yeah, we couldn't operate for very long with that. So that's what led to the quickest turnaround stage EVA that uh, I think we've ever done here. Well, and despite the quick turnaround, it was very successful, right? They got in and out in uh, the right amount of time on Saturday, and, and it looks like they've got it fixed. Well, uh, yeah, right amount of time. Boy, they, they, they raced through. I think when I was putting in my console log that the crew was exiting the airlock, as I was typing the sentence, the crew reported from the far end of P6. So <laughs> certainly got the, the right crew members up there to, to scurry around and do this pretty fast. And as you said, yeah, we're feeling pretty good about where we are. Um, the big leak, you know, the gusher that we were that the crew called down seeing the flakes from, we think we've got that isolated to the pump that we have taken out of the system. Okay. We call, we've call we referred to that, uh, the nomenclature of that pump is now Mr. Leaky. Uh, <laughs> and Mr. Leaky is, uh, we still have uh, telemetry insight on that pump, and we can watch it right now. You know, the Spartan officer, Matt Gilson, sitting over there right now, has just showed me the plot. The accumulator in that pump is going down. And that pump, it, we know that that has got a big leak in it. 
So that's a good sign. Whether or not the small leak we were seeing or smaller leak we were seeing last year is also in that pump. Well, we'll have to check that over time, but right now we're feeling pretty good. We definitely got the big leak, and we're definitely uh, able to run the system right now, which is, uh, if you would have asked me last Thursday if we were be in this position right now, I'd have said absolutely not. Very so we're impressive. doing we're doing very well right now. Great. So um, how long will it take for you to know whether or not the small leak is gone if you fix that with with this change out as well so we have you know we have teams of engineers as well as uh, those of us spartans who watch the data very closely and it'll probably take a couple of months at least to be able to say you know what we think the uh, what we think this system is doing and it'll take uh, longer if it's leaking less or leaking not at all so uh, as we've told our management we want to uh, if they don't hear from us, it's a good thing, probably. So we'll keep an eye on the data, and uh, we'll look at it over the next couple of months and make sure the system's running healthy. But we've got, actually, we, you know, when we first saw the leak, the first thing we did was we stopped the pump. And when we did that, we slowed down the leak rate. So we've managed to hold on to enough ammonia that we can run the system, and we still have a, a little bit of margin to with which that, you know, as fluids cool down, they contract, so they have a little bit less uh, fluid in the system, we can survive those sort of orbital variations and, and be okay. So we're looking pretty good right now. Okay. Well, um, I know after, or I guess after they discovered the leak and, and knew we were planning to lose that loop of the electrical system, they moved everything over to the other loop so that we wouldn't turn off you know, anything unnecessarily. Has that all been removed back to well, the... That's a good question. So the electrical power system of the station is designed very well. Uh, we have a lot of redundancy and the ability to cross-strap uh, different uh, power channels so that maybe one solar array feeds what another solar array should have. And that's all done at the MBSU, main bus switching unit, which you may remember from EVAs 18 and 19 that Sunny and Aki uh, replaced one of those last year. So this is the... We're talking about the two Bravo channel. That's actually our winds up being our most important channel. So when we saw that okay. leaking, we handed over its loads to the two alpha channel. So the two alpha is now supporting all the twos, the two A and the two B. And since then, we haven't been actually pulling any power from the two Bravo channel, the one with which had the leak on it. We're just waiting on some software updates to account for the new pump. And then early next week, we should be able to uh, produce a happy, healthy two Bravo channel supporting its own loads. Okay. And after that, would you say that everything would be kind of back to normal? As far as the uh, as far as crew and everybody else would be concerned, it'd be back to normal. As far as the Spartan console uh, is concerned, there's we haven't been in a normal for quite a long time, but okay. uh, but it'll be manageable. We'll call it manageable. All right. Well, thanks so much for talking with us. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, it's our pleasure.